Good morning, guys. Today is gonna be kind of a special fun episode of Gold Shaw Farm. We're doing another day in the life video, but I'm not gonna be talking to you guys about the farm animals outside. Today, we're gonna be looking at the life of Lil Barn Cat, the barn cat who became a house cat. Isn't she so adorable? Listen, listen to that purr. So every morning this winter, I've been getting up and I go downstairs and I build a little fire. Some nights I've got the fire going from the night before, but this morning I actually didn't have the fire going and so decided to get the fire going to get the day going. And Lil likes to sit and watch with me. She loves the fire. I know I build the fire for Allison and for me, but in a way, I kind of also build the fire for Lil Barn Cat. See, Lil Barn Cat used to be an outside cat. She used to hang out with Pablo Barn Cat, and she would run and play and chase mice and catch birds and do all the things that an outdoor cat would do. And she would never ever come inside the house. But then one day, all of that changed, and she's now a house cat permanently. I didn't want to have a house cat because I'm actually allergic to cats, and I get a stuffy nose, and uh, itchy eyes, and I sneeze. But when it comes to a little barn cat, I actually find it's worth it because, you know what? After all this cat's been through, I can't imagine my life without her. All right, Lil, you chill out by the fire. I'm gonna go do chores. All of a sudden, I notice a car pull up here in the driveway. And it was one of my neighbor's cars. And he looked at me dead away and just with a shake of his head said, I think I hit one of your cats. I recorded this video about five months ago. And at the time, I thought Lil Barn Cat was dead. She had been hit by a car, and she had been missing. We hadn't found her body, but we were pretty sure she was gone. But that next night, she showed up on our doorstep, dehydrated, suffering from fly strike, and having other injuries. So we rushed her off to the animal hospital, and they examined her. And it turned out she had a shattered pelvis and a ruptured bladder and she was going to need multiple surgeries and so we did everything we could and thanks to the generous support of our fans we were able to save Lil Barn Cat. She spent 10 days in intensive kitty care and eventually we were able to finally bring her home. But when we got her home she was weak and she needed to spend about 10 weeks living inside of a crate recovering from all of her injuries. She was just a sad broken cat at this point. And Allison and I did everything we possibly could to ensure her survival. Because when she went missing, we realized something. We realized okay, that we Pablo. absolutely loved the cat. Hey, Pablo, buddy boy. How are you doing this morning, pal? Huh? Are you come outside and do shorts with me? Hey, buddy boy. How's it going? Release the Quacken! <laughs> Dragon time! I sometimes work around the farm and I kind of miss having a little barn cat outside, having her be an actual outdoor barn cat, having her hang out with Pablo and she usually would hide from Toby, but she was an outdoor cat and we had two barn cats, but because of her injuries, we've had to make her a full-time house cat and she's adapted well and Pablo's adapted pretty well. You know, there's always going to be that missing barn cat that we have. I think sometime soon we're going to add some more barn kittens, but I just don't know when. Little barn cat though is really starting to live the life. She absolutely loves sitting by the fire. She practically bakes herself like she was a muffin. Just sitting there, staying all toasty, being all comfy. Hey, little barn cat. Come bearing gifts. So, 
I work to keep the fire going for Allison and for me and for little barn cat. She loves sitting by that fire, just being all comfy and cozy, relaxing and maxing, being all adorable. And gosh, I gotta admit, I just can't get enough of it. Yeah? Are you hungry? Okay, hang on. Okay, Lil. There's your food. Get you a little bit of fresh water. Yeah, so we've tried to keep a lot of Lil's mess just to this bathroom. She's got a litter box right there. Got her food dish right over here. Try to store her toys and other gizmos over here. But she pretty much has the run of the house. Lil can often be up to mischief. I think sometimes every so often she might catch the inkling of a mouse and looking around. But Allison's pretty much convinced that Lil's going to take out her Christmas decorations at this point. So far, we've been able to go a couple of weeks with the Christmas tree up and the decorations out and not having an issue. But I don't know. Lil just always seems a little bit too interested in those Christmas ducks. I think they just sort of remind her of a life that she once had. Not that I think she's unhappy inside. I do think, though, she misses the chase and the hunt. Are we still picking up that signal? Yes. I do like to play with toys to keep Lil active and engaged. One of my newest favorite ones, I got this like remote control mouse. So it's got this like little remote control and then it's got like these little wheels and you can drive it around. She absolutely loves it. I work really hard to keep Lil Barncat active and stimulated, making sure that she has a full and robust life, making sure that she has fun, making sure she's active and she gets exercise. It's really, really important to me. I don't think she thinks that this robotic mouse is a real mouse. I think she knows that I'm actually controlling it. But when we play mouse game together, it's like an opportunity for us to connect and to bond. And I think we both really enjoy it. I know I at least really enjoy it. Lil also likes to play with Mr. Fox here. I find that sometimes our playtime is almost like physical therapy for her. You know, she shattered her pelvis in about six different places, and for a tiny little cat like that, it's tough, and I don't think she's ever gonna fully regain the mobility that she once had, but as you can see here, she's moving around here pretty good. She's able to leap a little bit. She's able to try to catch things. She's able to play. She's able to run. So. I don't feel confident enough to have her outside being a barn cat living in the wild the way she used to do, taking all the risks like she used to do. But having her inside and giving her a little bit of playtime and then getting her a little tired, that's just A-OK -okay with me. On certain days, I have to just spend most of the day working up in my office. And a lot of times I'll let Lil come and join me. Because of my cat allergy, I didn't want to have the office, which is probably the room in the house beyond the bedroom that I spend the most time in, uh, getting infected with cat dander so that I'd be sneezing and scratching my nose constantly. But I just love this darn cat so much, I kind of broke my own rule. Let's be clear about one thing. I am most definitely not a cat person. Hello. Hey. No problem. Pumpkin princess. Dinner time's always a nice milestone for the day. You know, in our house, I do most of the cooking and Allison does most of the cleaning. I would take that trade any day of the week. And Lil, she likes to join me in the kitchen.
Well, come on. She has a tendency to sometimes run down the stairs and go into the basement whenever I open the door to get into the pantry. When Lil goes down into the basement, I don't hesitate to close the door and let her stay there because she has actually figured out a way to sneak out of the basement. We've got this little tricky latch and she's figured out how to open it. She's a very smart cat and she's also very vocal. When she's hungry, she'll let you know. Yeah, you want this? Sorry. This is for some reason, I've made a ritual each night of serving dinner for Allison and me and then popping open a can for Lil so she can eat with us. I don't know why I do it. It's weird, but I guess it kind of makes me feel like we're a family. And yeah, don't worry. I make sure that the cat food can that she eats out of has nice soft edges so she doesn't cut her mouth. I often think back to that day in June when my neighbor told me that he hit Lil with the car and I thought she was dead and I just remember being so sad and not being able to imagine how I'd get over the loss of this beautiful persnickety little kitten creature and the fact that we had a second chance with her and that we were able to save her and that she's able to live this life that you see here today. It's just an amazing thing to me, and it just fills my heart with so much joy to know that I can share that with you guys. She's just a great little cat, and I absolutely love her.